All right, so I got kind of a mix of, of soybeans and cotton as I've transitioned into doing soybean stuff. I've, I've got more soybean information now than I do cotton information, but a lot of this stuff kind of carries over uh, to either crop. So I had a version of this last year, and that's the uh, the traits that are the herbicide resistant traits that are available in soybean right now, and the ones that are going to be available uh, in the next few years. The namely the the balance GT and the MGI that kind of remains to be seen how that's all going to focus out with with company mergers uh, and, and different things when the when the dust settles. Uh, don't know that there will be two of those, but uh, right now they're they're kind of evolving. Uh, together, and those are the HPPD uh, herbicide resistant traits. All right, so we had we had a version of this last year, especially in our training material, the the summary of the different traits and the and the resistances between the two major crops, and I just kind of mashed them together and then highlighted uh, you know what's resistant and what's not. Obviously, we know that the the Roundup Ready system, you know, true true Roundup Ready is not not resistant to glufosinate or the, the different uh, glufosinate products or dicamber D and, uh, and then in soybean, we do have, I'm, I'm sorry, for Liberty Link, we do have the uh, stack trait cotton where we have the Roundup Ready or Glytol and the Liberty Link trait in one variety but then not in soybean. But then the, the two big ones, the new ones uh, in list, no resistance to dicamba and then the big one would be the fact that extend soybeans are not resistant to Liberty, uh, but the uh, extend cotton is. So last year, this, uh, you know, we, this came up on us a, a couple of times. The soybean picture, I think, is actually uh, from Arkansas, uh, but we had a little bit of that in Mississippi too, uh, kind of losing track of things and, and treating, the, treating the wrong field uh, with the technology with the wrong product. And that's kind of just a big swing and a miss. Uh, you think about probably the number one input we have right now is seed cost and uh, that spraying the wrong field with the wrong herbicide pretty much puts you back to square one. So just, just comparing uh, you know, some of the highlights that we had last year in the training material and then the stuff we talked about at different meetings. Then I went through and added uh, some information for, for Flexstar and for Liberty. So that would be in soybeans, that would be a, a Roundup Ready program or a Liberty Link program or uh, Extend program. And then when we do have the, the Enlist program online, uh, the, the things we would do there. So all of these, you know, depending on what technology you're using, you have an option for pre-treatments or post-treatments. Cutoff dates vary, uh, but but not not terribly restrictive on cutoff dates. Uh, you know if used correctly, and for application timings, the big thing would be the specifications on the label for weed size. With with Flexstar GT and with Liberty, there's really a, a range. We know smaller is better, and neither one of those is going to control the weed much more than three or four inches, but with the newer labels, the, the dicamba labels, all of those, and, and then Enlist Duo, and I didn't mention Enlist One. Enlist One is new. Uh, they just got a Dow just got a label for that this fall. That would be the, the Choline 24D not premixed with glyphosate. So that would be the, the 24D only. But both of those are much more specific on weed sizes. So application timing, not not tremendous amount of difference uh, among those four technologies. If we look at the extend system, which is what we had the, the most of last year, this is soybean. So the, uh, the two clusters of bars there is a pre and a no pre and then some different timings and mixtures uh, with dicamba. So this is over two years. In 2016 this was clarity uh, and then in 2017 we replaced the clarity with Ingenia but the, the data from the two years was very similar so we put it together so basically what you see is you know the more modes of action you are the better that's not new we talked about that for years before uh, either one either one of the two new technologies was available but uh you know the more more herbicide modes of action pre and post that you include the better that this particular system is going to work and uh you know in in soybean if this was in list you know, with, with the products there, I think you'd see very similar results with it too. <clears throat> All right, so I've shown this slide several times over the years. 
This is just application timings of Liberty in Liberty Link cotton. So this is, uh, man, this is probably like 2009 or 10. So I had a lot of mileage out of this, but you know, left to right, that's just beginning uh, treating two weeks, three weeks, or four weeks after planting. You can see uh, waiting to, to make that first application. You got a lot more, <clears throat> a lot more survivors uh, in, in those timings than you do when you initiate those applications earlier. Be the same thing for it, for any of the other products. Uh, that's just what I had the, the pictures for. All right, herbicide mixtures would be the next area that we talked about last year. And, and with Enlist and, and with the, the different products labeled in the Extend system, yeah, that, was a big, that was a big drawback last year was the number of available products that we could mix with those. All right, if you go and look at those websites now, not nearly as restrictive. It's not, it's not a comprehensive list of all options that you might want to put with it, but it's not nearly as restrictive uh, and I had a slide I took out, but there's well over 100 options uh, with, with all of those uh, to, to, to mix with. So the, the mixtures are not as restrictive, you know, back in, the, back in the normal area of what we would expect historically. But those websites still exist, and those websites are still the clearinghouse for what you can and cannot add to those products. So then if you start looking at the difference in the website, uh, on the left, of the slide, that's the end, you know, screen capture from the Enlist site, and then on the right is the Ingenious site, and if you, you focus in a little bit, the, the Enlist site just lists products. So there's herbicides, uh, adjuvants, there, there's uh, foliar fertilizers, there's everything in that list. Alright, so it's a little bit clunky trying to get through there, and it is in alphabetical order. So it's a little bit hard to find exactly what you need. The Ingenious site does break it out by category, so you can get through it a little bit quicker. Uh, but again, the mixture's not, not nearly as restrictive going into 2018 as what we dealt with this year. All right, these are some pictures from, uh, from some of our work at, at Stoneville last year with mixtures. All right, so the, the, the top right there, that would be uh, Roundup plus Dicamba. This was Ingenia that, that we used uh, in this test. So that's a V3 application. If you zoomed in close on that picture, this is, I think this is uh, two weeks after the application. You see a lot of pigweeds hanging around. Some of the, if you see some of the big stuff back in the back of that photo laying out in the middle, those are morning glories. Uh, and and they, they came up real early on us and, and so they were, they were pretty good size when we sprayed them. But, uh, and then down at the bottom would be Adam Warren Ultra. Uh, which is now an approved mixture uh, with uh, the dicamba products. That's a combination of Warrant and, uh, dang, what is Warrant Orchard? Is that Flexstar? From Eston, yeah. So, so Warrant and, Warren and from Eston, I drew a blank there for a minute. And then the, and then the bottom right would be the, the full treatment of Roundup, dicamba, plus the Warrant Ultra. So you got several. Several modes of action there. Our, our population there at Stoneville, you can, you can see in the non-treated. I, I, I had a Roundup only picture in there and it actually looked worse than the non-treated, so I took it out. Uh, so in that area of our field uh, this past year, we had a pretty good resistant population. All right, Larry, Larry mentioned this yesterday. Uh, this is still an, an issue that, that has to be dealt with on these labels. Uh, Flexstar and Liberty, you know, basically rain fast. Uh, requirements on those labels and then with the with the newer labels there's a rain fast but there's also a rainfall free period of 24 hours uh, yeah I was widely debated last winter on what that means and I don't know that it's any clearer what that means today than it was uh, 12 months ago at this meeting but still that's on the label and, and so it's got to be at least you got to attempt to adhere to what that means. Uh, it is a real deal. I've showed these pictures a lot in the last couple of years. I think they were in our, our training material as well. <clears throat> but, but the picture on the left there, that's, that's dicamba runoff prior to planting. That was actually in a commercial field uh, that, that we looked at several years ago. That, that dicamba came across the water fur from a, from a corn field that had, that had been treated with dicamba. And then on the right, uh, that picture is actually uh, from the station at Stoneville. Uh, it's 2,4-D runoff, uh, you know, at the low end of the cotton field. So 
those, those 24 hour restrictions for rainfall concerning runoff, those are both, those are both real, you know, real restrictions. All right, <clears throat> so then we get down to the nuts and bolts of actually getting this stuff out of your sprayer onto the weeds. So how many of you knew that the Flexstar label specified a minimum of 15 gallons of water? Anybody? Ryan Jackson, do you know that? Ryan Jackson did. He works for St. Jenner. All right, so I, did, I didn't know that. Uh, and, and none of you raised your hand there, so I'd expect none of you would raise your hand if I asked you how many actually did that. Uh, so, you, you know, that, that was <clears throat> something we don't think about, but Femesifen in Flexstar is a contact, or predominantly a contact herbicide. So, uh, you know, the more, the higher the water volume, the better it's going to work. Uh, there is a ground speed restriction for it, as well as for Liberty. Uh, but then boom heights and nozzles, you know, those are more generally summarized on, on those labels. All right, if you move, move to the newer stuff, you get into some, some more specifics. The uh, Extendamax and, and Fexapan labels, they have increased their water volume requirement from 10 to 15 on the newest printings of those labels. So, so those are 15 now. Ingenia is still at 10 on the label, uh, but I know that, that, you know, that BASF has encouraged you know, 15 gallons of water on those applications, and I think we got a world of experience uh, to where there was a difference between 10 and 15 uh, in Ingenia performance and with the others as well. Boom heights, 24 inches, you know, that's tough. Uh, it's just tough. And, and, you know, at least in the Delta where I spend most of my time, flat ground is not near as an issue as it is, you know, in, in different parts of the state where it's not as flat. Uh, so uh, you see the blank there for the nozzles and the pressure on, on Fexapan. I can't find nozzles on the Fexapan website right now. There's a, there's a page for it, but it doesn't list any nozzles. You go look at the new printing of the Fexapan label, it says check the website. It doesn't list any specific nozzles and they're not there right now. Or they're not there on, on the two different uh, computers that, that I've looked, uh, looked, looked for them on. So uh, <clears throat> Extended Max, there's 26 nozzles uh, listed right now in, in Ingenia. Some versatility there too. Uh, Enlist Duo and, and Enlist One, really no changes on it. Uh, from last year to, to 2018. All right, just real quick, sprayer clean out. Uh, showed these last year, that's a real deal as well. Uh, you know, damage, damage from rinsate, you know, not, not getting the sprayer cleaned out well, and then, you know, contaminated boom. So I think, I, I said this a lot last year, and, and I, I still believe it. I think, you know, the, the time you need to spend cleaning out a, a sprayer to, to make these applications is probably before you make the application. You know, for instance, if you got some atrazine gunked up in the lines, or you got some Dyrex or something like that gunked up in the lines, there's a, a lot of value in getting all that stuff out of there before you put uh, a growth regulator herbicide in. Off target movement, uh, I'm gonna let Tom do that, uh, but, but it's real with all four of these technologies. You know, spend a lot of time looking at rice. I say that every year, but I still spend a lot of time looking at rice uh, with different stuff on it that's not supposed to be there. And then, uh, of course, the, the off-target issues we have with soybeans this year. All right, selection pressure. Uh, you know, no, no surprise there with, with glyphosate and with prefix. Uh, PPO resistance hasn't blown up on us the way Larry described yesterday for Tennessee or the way it has in Arkansas, but those of you that deal with it know you deal with it, and, uh, and, and we talk to you about it. Uh, Tom, I don't know if Tom will mention this or not, but I've seen it with my own eyes. You know, they've, got some, they've got some questions about dicamba performance on Palmer Amaranth in Northeast Arkansas. Uh, it looks real to me, uh, but I don't, I don't know exactly where they are right now on that. All right, third year in a row with this slide. Uh, Nothing's changed, in my opinion. This is, again, this is strictly my opinion. We did all three of those last year. Uh, Larry, Larry went through that in detail yesterday. 
Uh, I did add that third point at the bottom, uh, application over a broad geography in a short time. I think we got into to some of that last year and then trying to figure out when we did have a problem where some of that stuff came from. You know, and then those bottom two, uh, we don't have enough experience yet to, to say where, where we will ultimately end up there uh, with those two. All right, so I'm gonna, I got just a couple minutes left. I wanna finish up with a couple of unrelated points uh, if y'all follow, follow us on Twitter, you saw this a month or so ago, uh, but, but Dr. Nandula that works for USDA, he's been working with some ryegrass populations that we collected from a lot of y'all over the last couple of years. And, and so that, uh, all those fields are treated with clethodem, and so we do have clethodem resistant Italian ryegrass in Mississippi now, uh, which is unfortunate, because that puts us down to paraquat, as an option for post treatment after this stuff comes out of the ground. Uh, and, and then all of the fun stuff that comes along with making a paraquat application in the spring. Uh, but this, this is real. You know, if, you, if you look at the results of the greenhouse, the, the top left there, that's VJ's susceptible check. So uh, the susceptible was very susceptible. And then the top right would be his uh, initial screen so that's, uh, those, those trays represent uh, multiple different populations. You can see controlled some and didn't control some others. And then the two pictures at the bottom, all of those plants in both of those pictures were treated with 16 ounces of Select Max. Uh, went, up, went up to, in a, different, in a different experiment, he went up to a gallon, equivalent to a gallon per acre of Select Max, that'd be an 8X rate and uh, had a lot of survivors. So this is real. Mid-Delta, Cahoma, Bolivar, Washington, Sunflower, LaFleur, I think Humphreys, and, and then separate from that, Yazoo County. So several counties, and the way we did it with pigweeds, I would suggest you do it the same way with ryegrass. If it's in your county or a county adjacent to yours, just bank on having some problems. Uh, so we can talk about that, you know, at length as we go through the winter. Fortunately, we had a really dry fall, and we had a lot of pre's go out. Some of those actually got, you know, rainfall to incorporate. Uh, I know a lot went out last week, so hopefully what's going on outside right now will kick those treatments off and, and help us avoid some problems in the spring. All right, last thing, we did a weed control, suggested weed control, uh, what do we call it? Weed management suggestion for Mississippi row crops this year. So that's printed. Dr. Martin help us help us push that through Ag Communications to, to get it printed by this meeting. So Steve, we appreciate you helping us do that. Uh, they're out there. Take as many as you want. If we run out, we'll print some more. Uh, but it, it's it it it's just row crops. So this is bare bones. I don't suggest you look at it riding down the highway, but it, you know if you pull it over, you could look at it on your steering wheel. Uh, it's landscape format now, and uh, uh, we put a lot of work into it, and, and so hopefully that's gonna be a, a useful tool for you. Like I said, they're out there on the table. Take as many as you want. Don't, don't take 25 of them, but you know if you need three or four, take three or four, and uh, when, when we need some more, we'll print them, and we'll have those at the Ag Expo, consultants meeting, wherever else. If you don't get one, need one, you'll call me, call Trent, call Darren. You know, somebody, somebody can get you what you need.